Hi, all. Hello. How we doing? We Horrible. Do are we doing a little bit better on the on the understanding of the kinetic molecular theory? Or are we still way up in the air, guys? Um, when they break it down and when they break it down into, uh, break it down into uh, PV equals NRT, I do okay, but the overall understanding is still iffy. Okay. All right. Basically, Kevin, what I want you to understand is I want you to be able to logically use some physics equations and determine the relationship between the properties that are indicated in the ideal gas law. That's what I want, okay? Does that kind of make sense? Kevin? Yeah, so you're saying we should be able, like no matter situation, be able to derive um, based on what we're given. No, I'm not asking you to derive the equation. I'm, I'm asking you to look at the equations I'm giving you and be able to derive logical conclusions from them. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, 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 I think I kind of get that. I'll give you a perfect example here. All right. If we're dealing with Avogadro's law, is everybody here? Gabe, Jasmina? I think this is all of us yeah. right now. Okay, I think that's, that's all of the people. So we will see how many people join us. All right. By definition, by definition, pressure is equal to force times the area, divided by the area. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Abe, Jasmina? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. All right. Now, I, another equation. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Now, that's the force of one particle. If we have n number of particles, then that force is equal to n times the mass times the acceleration. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if I plug that force into my pressure equation, this means that my pressure is equal to n particles times the mass times the acceleration divided by the area. Okay, pressure is pressure, fair enough. Number of particles, we're going to be able to relate to moles. Acceleration, we're able to relate to temperature. And area is going to be related to volume. Basically, I, I, I kind of showed you how acceleration is equal to temperature. It's that Boltzmann curve thing that I showed you a little while back, okay? Area, to give volume, if you're doing it of a, of a sphere, it's uh, basically area times the height of the particular item. So area is part of the volume. So are we, are we good with that? On, on another sideline, if I have one particle hitting the side of a balloon with one unit of force, if I put two particles with that same unit of force at that same acceleration, doesn't it mean that I've got twice as much force going there? Yeah. If I've got twice as much force going there, isn't my pressure going to go up by twice as much. Yeah. That is if the area it's hitting doesn't increase. And that's if my acceleration doesn't increase. So in other words, if my temperature stays the same and my volume stays the same, is this making a little more sense to you now? Okay, so basically I went, went through Avogadro's number. What this means is that if I have the volume of my substance and I divide it by my number of moles, 
if I have a constant pressure and a constant temperature, my volume divided by my moles is gonna be equal or constant. So if I change either the volume or the moles, that's gonna automatically change the other, but still they're both equal to K. So I have V1 over N1 is equal to K, which is equal to V2 over N2. Or if I wanna take it down to the overall equation that I gave you regarding the ideal gas law. If I have P1V1 over N1T1, that's gonna be equal to P2V2 over N2T2. But remember, I said constant pressure and constant T. So the P goes out of there and the T goes out of there. And I'm left with V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. Am I saying anything silly? Layla, are you up to speed here? Yeah. Okay, I just, just wanted to make sure. Okay. I did this question earlier. I'm gonna do another, I'm gonna do another simple equation in a few seconds. When you're solving gas law problems, you need to identify in the problem itself, what's constant and what's changing. From the constants, you identify the equation you need to do. Whether you do it from my P1 V1 over N1 T1 equal P2 V2 over N2 T2, whether you use that or whether you memorize which particular equation goes with this particular law. The thing is you gotta know what's changing and what's staying constant. That will identify which equation you need to use. The main obstacle then becomes keeping the parameters straight. Which constants or which volume goes with which moles? In the case of Boyle's law, which pressure goes with which volume? That becomes the major point of these problems. Did I do this problem the other day? No, I don't think so. All right, we have 12.2 liter sample containing half a mole of oxygen gas at a pressure of one atmosphere and temperature. If all the O2 is converted to ozone at the same temperature and pressure, what will be the volume of the ozone formed? Okay, I have one parameter, one set of parameters, right? I have the liters and volume of the O2, do I not, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah. Can I get moles of the ozone? I have an equation, I have a chemical equation down there. Can I get moles of the ozone? Yes. Okay. Now the second question is how? Gabe. If I have 0.5 moles of oxygen gas and all the oxygen is converted to ozone, Gabe, mm -hmm. how much ozone do I have? Gabe? Yeah. Um... Do you have an equation? You have a chemical equation there. No, no, that's not the chemical equation. No. Don't forget stoichiometry, guys. Gabe, do I have a chemical equation here? Yes. So if I have three moles of O2, uh, how many moles of o ozone am I making? O2. So if I have 0.5 moles of oxygen gas, can I predict? how much ozone I would have. Yes. So I'm gonna multiply it by my stoichiometric ratio. This means I have 0.33 moles of ozone. I stuff this into, I stuff this into my Avogadro's law equation and I get 8.05 liters. Questions, guys? 
questions? Is this making sense to you? Yeah. Okay, we're getting into our second one. Boyle's law, the volume of a gas is indirectly proportional to its pressure. Simple word definition. As the volume goes up, pressure goes down. As the volume goes down, pressure goes up. Think of it as you are squeezing a balloon. As you squeeze that balloon down, doesn't the air inside push back at you with a greater pressure? If I'm looking at this graphically, since it is an indirect relationship, I do not get a straight line. I get a curved line. That's how you know an indirect relationship as opposed to a direct relationship. So, the force stays the same. Okay, remember, pressure is equal to NMA divided by area. Okay, so pressure is equal to force divided by area. The force is staying the same because the temperature is constant, so my acceleration is not going up. My moles are constant because I've said that my moles aren't changing. The mass of the particular gas isn't changing. So N times M times A, the top portion here, is not changing. But what is changing is the pressure and the area. As my area goes up, I am dividing by a bigger number, therefore the pressure will go down. As my area goes down, I am dividing by a smaller number. So as the area goes down, my pressure is going to go up. Another way to look at this, if I have a balloon and I squeeze the volume down, do I not have less distance that the, that the particles need to travel? If they have less distance, they're gonna hit the sides more times. If they hit the sides more times, it's going to increase the pressure. Consequently, if I increase the volume, the length gets bigger. I get, less, I get less hits on the side of the balloon. Therefore, if I have less hits, I have less pressure. That breaks down to P1, V1, equals P2, V2. Pressure times volume is going to be equal to a constant if I have constant temperature in moles. Since it always equals a constant, if I change pressure, it's going to affect the volume. If I change volume, it's going to affect the pressure. A spark plug ignites gasoline in a car piston. When it does it, it has a pressure of 6.45 atmospheres and a volume of 135 centimeters cubed. What happens? That pressure pushes the cylinder out. When it reaches its maximum, the volume is 426 centimeters cubed. What is the pressure? Assume the gasoline was immediately combusted and the temperature does not vary. How are we going to solve this? Jasmina, what's staying the same, Jasmina? Layla, what's staying the same? 
temperature. Temperature staying the same. And have we put after everything's been combusted? Remember, we said the gasoline was immediately combusted. The gasoline was combusted. Have we put any more carbon dioxide and water in there? No. Have we taken any away? No. So what's staying constant? Temperature and? Area? No. Nope. Area's not staying the same because haven't I increased the volume, Layla? Oh, yeah. Remember, I said we haven't put any more CO2 and we haven't put any more water in there. We haven't taken any away. So what is staying the same? You got four choices, Layla. Okay, I've already shown you the volume is changing, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm implying by the question, what else am I implying is changing? Pressure. Pressure. You said, so we got pressure and volume are changing. You said that temperature stays constant. And I've said we're not adding any more carbon dioxide or water. So what else is staying constant? The fourth Mold. one, Layla. Moles. Moles. It says here, assume the gas, this is what this sentence is about. Assume the gasoline was instantly, combust was immediately combusted. That means all of the gasoline got combusted all at once. So I made a certain number of, of waters and a certain number of carbon dioxides. Okay, Layla? And I haven't increased it. So my moles and my temperature staying constant, pressure and volume are changing. Those parameters, what's changing and what's staying, indicates I have Boyle's gas. Now, Layla, what pressure am I going to associate with which volume? Um, 6.45 with 135 centimeters cubed. So all I'm going to do, remember, this is my Boyle's law equation down here. I'm going to put that first pressure and that first volume together. I'm going to equal P2 because I don't know what P2 is. And I'm going to put my second volume in there. So I do that out and I solve for P2. I get 2.04 atmospheres. Make sense, Layla? Yes. Notice, guys, I didn't change the labels. I didn't change as long, as long as the label for the volumes stays the same, or as long as the label of the atmosphere stays the same. You don't have to convert them. I got 1.5 liters of a sample of Freon at a pressure of 56 torr. I increase that pressure to 150 torr at a constant temperature. I am implying in the question that I have constant moles. I've just increased the pressure. I have not increased the moles or temperature. Jasmina, what's staying the same and what is changing? The temperature is staying the same. And what else? Uh, the moles. Moles and temperature staying the same. What's changing, Jasmina? Or, or the pressure. pressure. And? Um, liters. The volume. Pressure and volume. Okay, so we've identified pressure volume staying or changing, moles temperature changing. So we're using Boyle's law. Now, Jasmina, which pressure do we associate with which volume? Uh, 56 torr with 1.5 liters. 
and all we have to do is plus, plug it into the equation. Now, one more question, Jasmina. If my tor is increased, in other words, if my pressure is increased, what happened to my volume? Decreased. Decreased. So what will be the new volume? Again, I'm plugging it into the equation. And I solved this. My volume ended up being 0.56 liters. And another time, guys, sometimes you got to look at the equation and see if it makes sense. I have increased my pressure by three times. So therefore, my volume must decrease by a third. And approximately it did. We have questions, guys. Questions. Kevin. Yeah. What's staying the same? What's changing? Uh, our pressure and volume remains. Um, the, our pressure and volume is changing. The and what's staying uh, constant? Volume, the temperature and moles. Okay. That indicates Boyle's law. Put the parameters together that need to be together. Set up my equation for me. Oh, uh, well, it's a uh, 34.6 times 456 divided by 2.9. All right. Is that true? Look at the question. This is why I told you it's very important that you are able to discern which parameter stays with which parameter. Oh, no, it's 456 and 2.9 divided by 34.6. We do that out and it's 38.7 liters. Questions on Boyle's law, guys. Charles law. Temperature is directly proportional to the volume. In other words, as the temperature goes up, so does the volume. As the temperature goes down, so does the volume. Think of a hot air balloon, guys. When they start out, before they start heating up the air, the balloon is flaccid. It's just lying on the ground. They start heating up the air within the balloon. The balloon expands. Graphically, it's a direct relationship. I get a straight line. Explanation, pressure is equal to force divided by surface area and force is equal to number times mass times acceleration. Remember, temperature is a measure of how fast molecules move. The faster they move, the higher the temperature. So if the molecules are moving faster, my force is increasing, okay? My force is increasing, my pressure is staying constant. So if my force is increasing, this must mean my surface area has to increase as well in order for my for pressure to remain constant. Do we have that? Do we have this manipulation? Is somebody confused? Are we good? Do we have an amen, guys? Yeah, we got it. Now, keep in mind, different gases may react differently. Why? Why would that be? 
In other words, if I have helium, helium is affected. The helium's volume is affected much more than by temperature than methane or nitrous oxide. Why may it react differently? Because it's lighter. Actually, that's one of the reasons. It's, it's lighter. Uh, it's actually not lighter than hydrogen. But what are we dealing with here? What do we, what do we talk about? What, what is PBRNRT labeled as? PV equal NRT. What's that equation called? Come on, guys. PV equal NRT. What's that equation? Yeah, Thank you. Oh, right, yeah. So one of the parameters of the ideal gas is the fact that these gas molecules didn't have anything to do with one another. They didn't affect each other. So part of the reason why they react differently is the fact that they do interact. And that's what is caused by the different gases reacting differently. So using Charles law, Charles law relates volume and temperature. Pressure in moles must be constant. New and old conditions have to equal constant. So new conditions are equal to old conditions. If I throw out measure, pressure and moles, What's left is V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. Note, T is in the denominator. Right, guys? Right? Yeah, yes. Do we have a possibility of having a zero degree centigrade temperature? Is that possible? Yes. So therefore, we have to change. In Charles' law, we have to change the temperature to degrees Kelvin so that we do not have this particular problem. So we need, in Charles' law, we need to ensure that we're dealing with degrees Kelvin. All right. This is a side light, which we're going to get into in the third law of thermodynamics when you get to chem two. But basically what it's saying, at absolute zero, molecules cease movement. So remember that the temperature is defined as the average kinetic energy. Since the molecule still has mass, it has no velocity. At zero temperature, it has no velocity. So when all movement stops, that is equal to negative 273.15. And that's where that number came into effect. Conversion, you add 273.15 to the degree Celsius. Guys, please, please don't make this mistake. Generally speaking, most thermometers will, you will are measured out to the degrees, which means you estimate to the tenths of a degree uh, Celsius. So if it's if your measurement is to the tenth of a degree Celsius, what number do you add? Do you add 273, 273.1, or 273.2? We are having a bad day today. If my temperature in centigrade is measured to the tenth of a degree. When I go and add the constant, do I add 273? Do I add 273.2? Or do I add 273.15? 273.15. Oh, right, no, yeah. 0.2. 0.2? The 0.05 is going to round it up anyway, Gabe. 
because if I have, let me stop this. If I have, Okay, Gabe, do you see that? Yeah. If I do this, my top number is going to limit my significant figures only to the tenths place, right? To one place right. past the decimal. Then once I go one place past the decimal, I look to the second place. That's going to mean I'm rounding it up one anyway. So you might as well okay. just add 273.2. Okay. All right. All right, I got two and a half liters of a nitrogen gas is collected at 273K and it's heated to 325. Calculate the volume. Uh, Layla, does the volume go up or down? Up. Temperature's going up. My volume is going up. Can you, can you put this into an equation for me? Um, 2.5 moles. Okay, there's the equation. There's Charles' law. You got it? Mm hmm Go ahead. 2.5 liters over 273K equals V2 over 325K. Okay. Good enough, guys. Do that math out, we get 2.9 liters. Do I need to go through these guys? Are these simple enough that I don't need to go through multiple examples? You tell me, it's your time. Talk to me. Is anybody confused about these? No. I mean, so just to get like a quick overview, if in the problem, it says like volume and temperature, we automatically know it's like Charles law, right? If it's changing, if those parameters are changing. Okay. I'm going to introduce then, another yeah. one. I'm going to introduce the combined gas law in the near future, Gabe. Okay. Okay. But if volume and temperature are changing and again, temperature and I'm sorry, if volume and temperature are changing and pressure and moles are staying the same, Charles Law, plug in that equation. Okay, Gabe? Did that answer your question? Yeah, no, yeah, it answered my question. So I'm not gonna go through multiple examples of these questions. The last one I'm gonna go through is something called Guy Lussac's Law. This is not in your text. And basically, this, may, this is relating temperature and pressure. If my volume stays the same and if my number of moles stays the same. As temperature goes up, so does pressure. As temperature goes down, so does the pressure. Again, remember our two equations. Pressure is equal to NMA divided by area. My area is staying the same. My number of molecules is staying the same because my moles and my volume are staying the same. Therefore, I have P is equal to acceleration. As the acceleration goes up, so does the pressure. Temperature is related to acceleration. As the acceleration goes up, temperature goes up, pressure goes up. Acceleration goes down, temperature goes down, pressure goes down. Think of it like Casey Jones. Basically, as you are, as you are 
putting more fuel into that fire, heating up the steam engine of the locomotive. As you are putting in that temperature, raising the temperature, you're creating more pressure. The pressure is reacting with the cylinders and the cylinders are moving the wheels faster. So more temperature, more heat. Now, coincidentally, this is why things go boom. This is a mechanical bomb. A mechanical bomb would be something like putting Mentos in a, what is it, Pepsi, Mountain Dew? What do they put Mentos in, guys? Obviously, you guys are good oh. children, both except Kevin. Well. Put it in both, Kevin? What? Put it in both? I only did Coke. <laughs> okay. By increasing the temperature, what you're doing is you are increasing the pressure within the container. If the container has a fixed volume, eventually the pressure inside is going to want to release. So what it does is it explodes the container itself. That is how a mechanical bomb works. So as you are increasing the temperature, you are increasing the pressure. And what happened in the famous Casey Jones song, Casey Jones kept on going that locomotive faster and faster, where the pressure inside the, the uh, uh, steam engine got so great, it exploded the engine. So basically, I've gone through this. Gay-Lussac's pressure over temperature is equal to P2 over T2. Sample of oxygen at three and a half atmospheres is collected at 273 and heated to 325. Calculate the pressure assuming constant volume in moles. Again, we're going to keep the 3.5 and the 273 together. That's going to be equal to X over 325, and we get 4.1 atmospheres. Questions here, guys? Okay. If we combine all these laws together, and we're not going to deal with Avogadro's because we're keeping moles constant in this one. If we combine Boyle's, Charles, and Guy Lussac's, what we end up with is PV over T is equal to K. Again, we're keeping the moles constant. So if we change the conditions of the pressure, volume, and the temperature, we end up with the bottom expression. P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 divided by T2. A mass of argon occupies five liters under a pressure of 740 millimeters mercury on Miami Beach at 30 C. What volume would the argon occupy if it were on Mars? The surface pressure on Mars is 0.6 that of Earth's and the temperature on Mars is 20 Celsius. Can you tell me, first off, is the volume increased or decreased? Logic it out, guys. Does the volume increase or decrease? Increase. What's happening with the pressure? Going down. Pressure is going down. What's happening with the temperature? It's going down. So you have conflicting things here, Kevin, right? Pressure going oh, down. 
Pressure going down means that the volume is going to go up. Correct, Kevin? Yeah. Temperature going down means the volume is going to go down. So can you tell just by the equation, just by the problem that's given, whether the volume is oh, so. going to increase or decrease? No. Sometimes you can, though. If, I, if the pressure would, would increase and the temperature would go down, pressure increasing means smaller volume. Temperature going down means a smaller volume. That means that you're going to have a smaller volume overall. Does that make sense? Yeah, I was just thinking it's... No. You can also do it the other way around. If pressure decreases and the temperature increases, pressure going down means volume goes up. Temperature going up means volume goes up. So sometimes you can tell what's going to happen with the volume. Other times you can't. So, if I'm solving this problem, the first thing I have to do is I have to look at the pressure that I have in Miami Beach. Surface pressure on Mars is 0.6% of Earth's pressure. So I have to take this 740 and multiply it by 0.6% to get the pressure on Mars. I then have to take the 30, convert it to uh, convert it to Kelvin by adding 273. So this is going to be 303. This is going to be 293. So if I set the problem up, and unfortunately, I had it. I don't know where it's at right now. And show. Here, home, new slide. So in this case, I know that my P and V, I get 740 times five liters divided by 303 is gonna be equal to 0.6 times 4.44, that's 0.6% of 740, X divided by 293. I solved this out. And I get a volume of 805 liters. Questions, guys? New problem. Jasmina. At STP, a gas occupies five liters. What is the volume of that gas when you heat it to 325 and keep it at two atmospheres? Just mean it. Do I have enough information to solve this problem? Uh, huh? I think so. <laughs> so, what is my pressure at five liters? Uh, two. No. Atmospheres. No. What is the condition? What is the condition of the gas at five liters? What do the first two things in that sentence tell you? Oh, standard temperature and pressure. So, it's so what's one. the pre? Go ahead. Go ahead, Jasmina. One atmosphere. 
and the temperature is? 273.15 Kelvin. Okay, so I got five liters, one atmosphere, five times one divided by 273 is equal to two times X divided by 325. All right. If you want to think about the ideal gas law in another way, we can think of it like Boyle's law, Charles, Guy Lussac's, and Avogadro's. If we mix them all up, then we get PV equals NRT. Now, let's talk a little bit of strategy. If your conditions aren't changing, which law do you use? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. The conditions are not changing. Which equation do you use? Your gas law, guys. The conditions aren't changing. So therefore, what's going to happen is we're going to give you three of the components, or we're going to give you a way to figure out three of the components. All you have to do is use the ideal gas law to solve for the fourth. A sample of hydrogen gas has a volume of 8.56 liters at a temperature of zero C and a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres. Calculate the moles of H2. Am I saying that anything is changing in this equation? Does the problem say anything is changing? Guys? No, it just wants you to find the moles that are present. So, do I have the pressure? Gabe, do I have the pressure? Uh, yeah, yeah. Do I have the volume? Do I have the volume? Yes, 8.5, yes. Do I have the moles? No, that's what you're trying to get. Do I have the constant? Um. Do I have the constant? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yes. <laughs> and do I have the temperature? Yes. So I have everything in the equation except for moles. All I got to do is solve for moles. The biggest, the biggest pain here when professors give you ideal gas laws is they usually give them to you where you do not have liters. You have to convert the volume to liters pressure to atmospheres, Celsius to Kelvin, and you end up with moles. You have to understand, to use this constant, you have to convert your volume to liters, your pressure to atmospheres, and your temperature to Kelvin. I plug everything into that equation, and I end up with 0.57 moles. Again, the biggest pain. What volume is occupied by 11.0 grams carbon dioxide at 25 C and 375 Tor? Kevin, can you give me, can you, can, from this information, can you calculate the pressure in atmospheres? Kevin. He said in the chat he'll be back. Okay. You have to go somewhere. Yeah, thank you, Gabe. Gabe. Yes. Again, are any conditions changing? Mm, no. Okay. We're just trying to find volume. 
You're just trying to find volume. Can you convert my pressure to atmospheres? Yes. Can you convert the Celsius to Kelvin? Yes. Okay. So we're, we're left with volume and moles. Can you give me the moles? Yes. How are you going to do it? Uh, you just, uh, with the molar mass of carbon dioxide. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to, again, if you want those extra problems in here, I'm just skipping through them. Okay. A sample of diborane gas, substance that bursts into flame when exposed to air, has a pressure of 0.454 atmospheres at a temperature of minus 15 C and a volume of 3.48. If conditions are changed so that the pressure is 0.616, the volume is 0.307, what will be the new temperature of the sample? Layla, are conditions changing? No. Wait. Yes. Do I use the ideal gas law? Uh, yes. Okay, remember what I said at the start of this. If conditions do not change, use the ideal gas law. If they do change, then you're going to be using one of the other gas laws. Put together your overall equation. P1, V1 over N1, T1 is equal to P2, T2 over N2, N2, P2, V2 over N2, T2. Okay, sorry, got lost in there. Okay, Layla, what is staying the same? What can I get rid of? Um. Have I mentioned moles at all? No. If I haven't mentioned moles, assume it stays the same. Can't solve the problem otherwise. So I've eliminated moles. This leaves me with what? Um. Okay, that is the overall equation, Layla. You just said that moles are not changing. Is the pressure changing in the equation? Yes. Keep that in your overall equation. Is the volume changing? Yes. Is the temperature changing? Yes, because you're trying to find the new temperature. So when you have this overall equation, P is changing, V is changing, T is changing. Those all stay in there. N is staying the same, eliminate it. So you get P1, V1 over T1 is equal to P2, V2 over T2. So if I'm going to solve this and Remember 
I think we're solving for the volume, right? Nope. Would you agree with that, Layla? Um, yeah. I solved this out and I get 308. All right. Key when you're working your calculators, guys. A lot of people, when they're doing something like this big equation, what they do is they take the 0.616, multiply that by 3.07, by 258. Then what they do is they do divide by the 0.454, but then they multiply it by the 3.48. When you get to this point, hit your enter, get the number up, and then you're going to divide by that one again. Just a little trick. Okay, do I have quest? One more law to go through, 15 minutes to get it done in. One more law. Are we good guys? Do we understand yep. everything up to this point? We good? I'm hearing nothing. I'm hearing crickets here, guys. Are we good? And amen. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll go with the yeah. All right. The last law we're going to deal with in the gas laws is something called Dalton's law of partial pressures. If you have a mixture of gases, then to get the total pressure of that mixture, you have to add the pressure of each individual gas to get, you have to add the pressure of each individual gas. Okay, this means if something is reported to be collected over water, the water is also adding some pressure to that volume that's collected over the water. So your pressure total is going to be equal to your actual pressure of your gas plus the pressure of the water. Sample of gas is collected over water and the total pressure reads 810 millimeters of mercury at 29C. The water pressure at 29 degrees Celsius is 30 torr. What is the overall pressure of the gas? Gabe, how are we going to solve this? Um, so you have to solve for pressure. Okay. Um, Look, Gabe, look down here. Yeah. Would you add just 30? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. It's a perfectly good answer. Uh, Jasmina, what would you do here? Um, add 810 to 30. First of all, you have to realize that a millimeter of mercury is the same thing as a tor. Okay? Yeah. Gabe? 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 Yeah. All right. Yeah. So my total pressure is 810. That goes under PT. That's equal to the pressure of my gas plus the pressure of my water. 
So in order to solve that, I have to subtract 30 from each. Pressure on my gas is going to be 780. Jasmina, did you say add? Yeah, I misread the question, but I get it. OK. Calculate the volume of methane at STP if 250 milliliters is collected over volume, over water at 60 C and 781 torr. Water vapor pressure is 148 torr at that temperature. What is the mass of the methane collected? First thing you have to realize, the pressure, the pressure that you're seeing there, the 781, is the pressure of the methane and it's the pressure of the water vapor. So just like we did in the last problem, we have to subtract the 148 from the 781.5 to get the pressure of the methane. That gives me 633.5 torr. Now, how are we solving? Are our temper are our parameters changing. Got to analyze the problems, guys. Are things changing in this problem, or do I just simply use PV equal NRT? Yes. Yes. I gave you an or question and you answer yes. Yeah, things are changing. Things are changing. Okay. Have my moles changed? No. So I'm going to use, everything else is changing. So I'm going to use my combined gas law, P1, which is the amount collected over water at 60 degrees Celsius and 250 milliliters. So 633.5 torr times 250 milliliters divided by 60 plus 273, 3, 333 C is equal to one atmosphere or 760 torr times X divided by 273. To set the problem up, first thing I did was I determined what the actual pressure of my of my methane was then i determined my pressure was 633.5 torr times 
170 liters. Is that what the question asks for, guys? No. Uh -oh. Ah. How are you going to solve for that? We got five minutes to make this determination, guys. Oh, by the way, slight problem. This is not liters, this is milliliters. How are we gonna solve? How do we get the mass of the methane? Um, you multiply the volume by the density? I don't know, how do you? Do I have two sets of conditions? Do I have two sets of conditions? Guys? Oh, I don't know. Do I have one set of conditions that gives me a temperature, pressure, and volume? Yeah. Do I have another set of conditions that gives me a temperature pressure? And did we just not solve for the volume? Yeah. So literally speaking, I can use PV equals NRT. I can take my 633 divided by 633.5 divided by 760. That gives me 0.833 atmospheres times uh, 0 0.250 liters divided by 0 0.08206 times my temperature was 333, I believe. This gives me I also could do it the other way. Effectively, what happened is when we did our changing around to get significant figures, when we did our rounding, that affected our result. But you could effectively solve it in either fashion. You have two conditions here, guys. You have two conditions. You have the condition of STP 
plus the volume you solved by using the combined gas law, or you have the volume, temperature, and pressure solved for moles that way. Then this simply becomes 0 0.0762 times 16 grams per mole. The biggest problem is with these things is trying to figure out. Biggest problem with these is trying to figure out which equation you have and which way you need to solve it. Questions, guys? Yeah, I know it's a whole lot of problems. And well, tell me your sense now. Tell me what you're Better. feeling now. Kevin? I feel better about it. I need to practice that one, the one we just did, but. Jasmina, Layla, Gabe? Mm, mixed feelings. Mixed feelings? Yeah. I guess I just need more practice before the test. Same. Are we going to get a practice test, like, or no? I don't know if I have one prepared or not. All right. I will. Stop share. Let's see if I have a... Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the so wrong one. the online or the extra homework that you have on course content, do you think that's like a big help? Yes, I do. For the test? Yes, I do. Okay. That's not what I want. No idea what that is. Stop share. Okay, let me try and get it on here, okay? Okay, zoom, boom. Okay, I'm back in here. You seen the screen, Gabe? Gabe. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, I see it. All right. Uh, right now, there are eight questions. I'm probably going to throw a simple ninth question on there. Uh, practice on what? test. On the, on the I'm, I'm, right now, there are eight problems on. Oh, the forum. The... On the forum, yes. Okay. No, there are eight questions on the test. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm probably okay. going to increase that to a ninth one. Okay. Are the, I don't want to like, I know I asked you this last time. Is it like all multiple choice or, or not no. all multiple choice, but no. they're all short answer? There are eight, I'm sorry. There are eight questions and nine true false questions. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. So 17 questions on the test, that's what you're saying? I'm confused. Yeah, nine true false, Kevin. Okay, we can take it anytime on Thursday or how's that work? You can take it from eight until 7.30 p.m. And just to make sure we're timed two hours, right? Or two hours and 30 minutes or however long. Uh, yeah, I'll give you two hours and 30 minutes. All right, thank you. Okay, remember guys, what we, what we studied here, what the test is about is we did stoichiometry, solution chemistry, acid bases, and the gas laws. That's what you're getting tested on. Okay.
Beyond eight, we are dealing with Okay, I'll fix it. I will, this will be your practice exam. I will fix it and load it up for you. Okay, I will Thank do you. that. I will do that for you. Thank you so much. Any other questions, guys? Eight? No, I'm just gonna go with eight. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Eight questions that are problem problems. You're going to have to show me work to solve them. There are nine true false questions. Remember guys, with solutions and with acid bases, I asked you things like different properties of acids and bases, and there were some definitions and things in solutions. Any questions about that? I'm here now guys. What did, what did you just say? I, I was writing notes. Nine true false questions. Remember, yeah, about I, the I went through and, and talked it. about solutions, some of the definitions and things. I also went and gave you some of the, the properties of acids and bases. So that's what the true false questions are about. The other eight questions are legitimate stoichiometry, solution chemistry, acid bases. Uh, remember how to do titrations and gas laws. Remember, you can apply the ideal gas law to get moles, and then you can apply the moles into a stoichiometric problem. Or you can use the stoichiometry to generate moles and then combine that with the gas law, with the ideal gas law to get volume pressure or anything like that. Other questions, guys? So no class Thursday? No class Thursday? You have a test. All right. I think that's it for me. Have a good day. Thank have you. Have a good day. Take care. Have a good day and weekend if I don't see you. You too. Layla, you doing okay? You. Rosmina? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any confusion about this stuff? No, I think I got it. I just need to practice the last one you went over. That last, well, it's the last one's easy. All you have to do is realize that it was asking you for the moles, or asking, it was asking for the grams of methane, and you can get the grams of methane knowing if you have the moles. Yeah, I understand the last one. And you can solve it in two different ways, that's all. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you. You too. Have a good weekend. You too. See you on Tuesday.